we are inside a lot and this could be the reader's dream. Have you ever picked up a book series? One book in, two books in, three books in, and then felt the horrific realization that you just wasted hours of your life that you could never get back. So today we're gonna be talking about long boys. <laughs> the definition of a long boy is a book series that like, once you pick it up, it's going to be an investment, an investment of your time, an investment of your money if you're the type to buy books and not just borrow them from the library. Are these long boys worth it or should you just skip it? The first one, I think you're going to know where which direction it lies right away, but I'm just going to throw it up there anyway because I firmly believe this should be on everyone's reread list. Harry. Potter. This is a seven book series. It also has a couple of companion books. Unless you're like a hardcore Potter fan, such as myself, you may not have reread this one recently. And I'm here to tell you, go for it. This is a book series which really gets better with age. And by age, I mean your age. The first time I read these books, I was reading them as they were being published and I loved them. And then after like high school, I was kind of like, well, why never have I never reread them? And that has formed a lifelong addiction where I reread the series once a year. I listen most often to the Jim Dale, but now as the illustrated ones are coming out, like I am obsessed. This one I highly recommend, especially when you have a lot of time on your hands and you can just burn right through. Them. There's nothing really that like pulls you away from it. It's such a well done book. Highly recommended. Highly, highly re recommended. All Aboard the Nostalgia Train. Woot, woot. This is one of my favorite series. It's also a yearly reread, so right off the bat, worth it. This is The Little House on the Prairie, and we follow Laura. She lives with her ma, her pa, and her sister Mary. You just follow Laura's life as she grows up from a four-year-old, five-year-old kid up until when she gets married. Again, it's so well written and it really stands the test of time and that's one of my favorite things about it is just no matter how old I am, when I reread this book, it makes me happy and it makes me just so invested. The first eight books in this series are all rather short, but those are like the main canon. The ninth book was found after she passed and it was published very broad strokes and complete like. Now some of you also might be aware that there is more books to this series and it follows Laura's sisters or her other family members and how they lived their lives. I haven't read the other ones because those ones are written by Roger Lee McBride who was quote unquote the adopted grandson of Rose which is Laura's daughter but he was never formally adopted. Apparently Rose told him all kinds of stories when he was younger and then like 20 years later he started publishing books from Rose's family's perspective. And to me those ones aren't canon because it isn't written by a wild Laura Ingalls Wilder or someone who's an actual Wilder family. It's more of like this is probably what happened but I'm gonna write a fictionalized account because this series is really popular. So keeping that in mind, I have read this series in completion and it's one of my absolute favorites and I cannot get enough of it. Highly recommended for a reread. Wolves of Mercy Falls by Maggie Stiefvater. This one is a three book series with a companion book that's a slight spin off. And to summarize, boy loves girl. Girl loves wolf. Wolf is actually a boy who loves girl. Wolf turns into boy. Girl loves boy. Kiss, 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 kiss. Kiss, 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 kiss. 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 Then tragedy happens and they're separated. Repeat that for roughly three books and that's the series. So yeah, it's just a lot of 
drama. It could just be me. Maybe I'm just not the right target audience, but I was just so annoyed because it's just, it felt pointless and it felt like we were running circles around something. I did kind of like the fourth one though. The fourth one was like completely sidetracked from the main plot. So maybe that's why. I disliked all of the characters equally. So at least there's that. But yeah, I just wasn't into it at all. So at this point, I was very much not particularly into Maggie Seafatter. And then I read this one and everything changed. The Raven Boys. And this is one of those books that just sweeps you off your feet. And there's so much that happens that you're like, can't live without reading the next one. So this one follows Blue. She meets Gansey, Ronan, Adam, and Noah. They go to a school, Eglinby, like a very fancy, very rich prep prep school. And the way their lives just intertwine and the way they are like portrayed so wonderfully instantly had me addicted to this book. Like I could not put it down. I've listened to the audiobook at least twice all the way through by now. The narrator is stunning. It's impressive. It is incredibly impressive how well the narrator reads these books. Love them from the bottom of my heart. And I would absolutely say this four book series, 100% worth it. 100% worth it. the selection let's just bring out the tea right away so this one is a five book series with like four companion ish books in this society there is very strict social structures every time the kingdom needs a new bride it's picked out of kingdom scale the bachelor televised through the entire kingdom as like a unifying thing i liked this series on principle. It was fun. It was whimsical. The first book, it was enjoyable. However, it went from like one good book to like a five book series, which was a huge stretch. I really feel like everything could have been condensed to one, maybe a duology, and it would have been great. But the longer these books went on, the more plot holes became apparent. Or I realized the author really didn't plan it out very well. There's so many things that like even my untrained eye picked up and I'm like, ah. So it became very frustrating to me. So like this series, like maybe if you're curious about it, try the first one, but just be aware the longer it goes on, the worse it gets. At least that's how it was for me. The Lunar Chronicles. So this one was a little bit of a surprise for me. So this book is a pseudo futuristic, pseudo cyberpunk look and with a healthy sprinkling of fairy tales. So the first book follows Cinder. She's a cyborg, lives with her stepmom, has to do all the cleaning like Cinderella. Another one follows Scarlet, who is like Red Riding Hood. And it goes on and on from there. First book, if I'm gonna be honest, it was all right. It was all right. It didn't blow me away, but it also wasn't terrible. I didn't really think I was going to keep going with the series though, just because I just, I wasn't feeling it super strongly. Second book, better than the first. Third book, better than the second. Fourth book, blown away. Companion books, excellent. It was really good and I was so happy that I picked it up and I kept going with it. So if you're looking for something like futuristic, but still kind of hometowny fairy tales, this is the one for you. The Giver. Yeah, there's a reason why we only read the first Giver in class. The Giver follows Jonah. He's 12 years old, so he's coming right up to the age where he has to decide his career for the rest of his life. He ends up partnering up with the Giver and the giver holds all of the memories of the town and kind of protects everyone from anything painful or anything too happy or too sad. It's one thing that's very important in society is that everyone functions efficiently and that is involved with like not giving 
into your emotions and not really having emotions to begin with. So that book was good and it leaves you on a cliffhanger and not a lot is explained. So then for the second book, we follow a new set of characters tangentially related to the first. Sometimes old characters make an appearance and it keeps going from there. However, none of them had the sparkle of the first book. Every book, they introduce new concepts and they're never fully explained or fully explored. Some of them seem to contradict concepts from other books and that became very frustrating for me as a reader. And I ended up being more frustrated by the end of the book than I really thought was possible. I am not a serial killer. And it's a six book series. This book follows John Wayne Cleaver. And his entire life he's been fascinated with serial killers. He's noticed a lot of parallels between his life and serial killers. He does not want to become a serial killer. So he has like these very strict rules in order to make sure that he doesn't fall into any serial killer tendencies until a serial killer moves to town. I love it. I love it. The way the character thinks is so different and yet so fascinating really pulls you into this series. I also love how committed he was to like preserving his humanity even though he didn't feel it in himself. Highly recommended. Such a good book. Worth it. The Maze Runner. This is, and like I don't have any proof for this, but like I firmly believe it. This is a case of I wrote a cool book and it got really popular and then I didn't know what to do next. So the first book really works well. If we have our main character Thomas, he wakes up in a maze and there's a whole society of boys there and they, what they're doing is trying to survive and escape. The more you read in this series, the more you realize the author really doesn't know what they're talking about. There's like reasonable science fiction and then there's this. So patently wrong that like I was laughing out loud. And the other thing is like the relationships in these books were so one dimensional, so elementary. Like I'm just like, it's very frustrating to me as a reader. I think this book would have worked well as a one part book and just leave it as a mystery at the end. But the fact that the author wrote two more books with this didn't work at all. And then the two companion books were supposed to like kind of explain things that weren't explained in the first few books. They didn't explain anything. And then the last one is actually the longest series that I have. And it's called The Last Apprentice. This series does get a little bit confusing purely because there's British versions and then there's the US versions and they have slightly different titles. So this series follows Tom Ward. He is the last apprentice of the spook. The spook is a, I think just like monster hunter for lack of better term. Bogger, ghosts, ghasts, a little bit of demons and definitely witches. Lots and lots of witches. So anyway, they start bothering the locals. They call for a spook. A spook comes in, exterminates, terminates, or imprisons based off of what kind of creatures they deal with. Meanwhile, there's something evil brewing in the country and they have to find a way to stop it. I love this series so much. Each one of them is illustrated brilliantly and it's so much fun. It's I think it's supposed to be more so like a middle grade series, but it definitely has some spooky moments and it is worth it so much. I love it. And if you have time on your hands, this is a good one to fill that time with. Hi, bug. And that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching and happy reading. Bye.